Welcome to Native Yoga Toddcast. So happy you are here. My goal with this channel is to bring inspirational speakers to the mic in the field of yoga, massage, body work, and beyond. Follow us at Native Yoga and check us out at nativeyogacenter.com. All right, let's begin. Welcome. Today's guest is Holly Gastel. Holly is a yoga teacher out in Encinitas in San Diego, California. I met Holly when I first started practicing in Tim Miller Studio when he was on the E Street uh, location in Encinitas in 2004. And <clears throat> Holly was practicing there, and I, I remember her clearly. I remember being uh, amazed watching uh, her practice. I remember coming into that studio and just being in awe of the level of dedication of all the practitioners, the sincerity, the humility. I remember my first session practicing with Tim Miller. I had come, Tim and I had come back from India after practicing with Patabi Joyce in Mysore. And if, when we were when we were in Mysore, uh, Patabi Joyce had said, well, if you're from San Diego, then you must be Tim's student. And I had not studied with Tim before, so it was one of the greatest blessings, really, to be able to go back to Encinitas or to California, to Southern California, and stumble into the Ashtanga Yoga Center on E Street. And I'll never forget the first time I practiced with Tim, I was nervous and excited, and... I got to a pose that's called kukutasana, rooster pose. That's where you put your legs in lotus and you try to slide your arms through the lotus. First coming to Garbha Pandasana, you roll around on your back five to eight times clockwise. You pop up onto your hands and you're holding a arm balance with your legs wrapped around your arms in lotus. And I've been struggling with that pose so much uh, when I was in India. I, I did not think that Patabi Joyce and Sharat were going to let me go beyond that pose because my lotus was so miserable. It hurt. It was so tight. And I just could never get it. I resorted to trying to put coconut oil on and slide my arms through. And, and uh, it was just, it was one of my nemesis pose and I had so much challenge with it. And I came in and I remember Tim looked at me and kind of mm, like, Mm, that's not going to cut it. And I went, oh no, because I'd already had a bit of a mishap with this pose where I blew my knee out and I was not really interested in getting pulled on. And uh, <clears throat> Tim came over and it was like a magic trick. The way he effortlessly applied pressure, slid my arms through, wrapped me up in the Garba Pandasana, rolled me around five times, popped me up in the Kukutasana. And... I had such an incredible reaction to that. Like I, I just, something inside of me welled up with so much excitement and enthusiasm. I, I was just overblown, overjoyed with, uh, just stoke. Uh, I just, I was like, and I got out and that first thing I thought was like, I got to call my mom and I got to tell her. <laughs> I called my mom up. I'm like, my mom practices yoga. My, my family, my mom and dad do. And uh, I was like, mom, you won't believe it. I just had the most amazing yoga class of my life. And I just gave her the whole lowdown. And she was obviously, you know, thinking, well, that must have been, that must have been good. <laughs> you seem pretty excited. But, um, you know, it was an incredible era. Personally, the, the vibe was just amazing. And uh, Holly was there, and I, I just always, I'm just so excited that I had not a chance to meet her, and then time's going back and studying and practicing out there. Slowly over time, I've gotten a chance to cultivate getting to know Holly, and so that's why I'm really excited to have share this conversation with you guys that Holly and I have, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Holly, I'm so happy to have you here. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm happy to be here. Thank yeah, you. It's been doing really good. Thank you so much. You know, I was um, reading your about my journey on your website, and uh, it got me so excited 
because the way you shared your experience, uh, so the listeners understand or know that, you know, you started practicing Ashtanga or yoga back in 1994. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. And I was just thinking like when I started doing the math, like in about, so that would put us at like in, in 2024, you'd, you, that'd be like 40 years of, of Ashtanga experience. That's incredible. It's been a journey, that's for sure. <laughs> that's, ama <laughs> that's amazing. That's a, that's a solid uh, amount of time to stick with one thing, to, to be steady yeah. with. Yeah. I love it. That's amazing. And, uh, and I, I guess one thing I remember when I was, as I was reading about your journey, you were mentioning how, well, first of all, you, you mentioned, um, practicing with rich and I love rich so much. And so that, that made me smile when you mentioned your history with him. I didn't realize all that in terms of how you, and I, and I'd, I'd recommend everybody who's listening to go to your website, hollygastel.com and, and give it a read. I think you did a great job writing it, but you kind of mentioned that you like when, when you started going to, Ashtanga Yoga Center and practicing with Tim Miller that you were nervous and apprehensive. Like there's a reputation and you were like, oh my gosh, will I be able to hack it or handle it? And uh, that's such a, I remember feeling that exact same way. And, and I feel like that's such an interesting part of the history and the era. Can you share any thoughts about your kind of introduction to Ashtanga Yoga and what you were thinking back then? Yeah, I had started um, practicing Ashtanga Yoga at a gym called Frog with actually Dominic Corigliano mm. taught there and Allison Lewis. Nice. And I stuck mostly with Allison because she taught um, basic, a basic Ashtanga class. And then Allison was going to India. And so she's, I also took a different class with her where I met Rich at uh. this place called Circle of Friends in the evenings, right? Mm -hmm. And she was going to India. So Rich had already started going to the yoga center for a little bit and I was too afraid. And then Allison said, you got to go. And then I thought, well, Rich is there and I, and he'll be my friend there. So I went, um, just at first, just to the lead first series. And I don't know if you've ever just take it, taken a, a stronger prep class, but I, a, a stronger prep and the first series mm. are a little different to say the least. Right. So my first, first series class, I was so nervous. And then, you know, Tim was teaching and some of the poses I hadn't really ever seen before except for pictures. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so like all the John Shashasanas and all the Mari Chasanas, you know, Bhujapidasana, all the more difficult poses. Yes. Sometimes I was just sitting there next to Rich going, oh my God, what am I supposed <laughs> to do? <laughs> What is and going I'm on? Not, <laughs> I'm not naturally, like, I'm flexible now, but I'm not a naturally flexible person. Yeah. So at this point, I could just barely touch my toes on a strong day, you know? And so I just, said I was really um, eye-opening. Yeah. And just meeting Tim for the first time and under those circumstances, yeah. I just felt like, wow, I'm so nervous. And then it was actually Rich <laughs> who said, you need to start coming to Mysore because that'll really help. Yeah. And I thought, going to Mysore, I can't even do this first series class. Right? That seems like yeah. that's going to be the super advanced class. And how am I ever yeah. going to start that? <laughs> yeah. Well, and you're like, oh, my God. And then he's really going to see me practice. And I'm already a nervous breath mm. when I'm there, you know. And Tim is great. He's so funny. And he... He has this great um, sarcastic sense of humor, right? That I I really love. And at the time when he was facing, that would even make me more like, oh my god, now I'm more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> because you're becoming <laughs> sorry. <laughs> because you're beginning, you're even becoming more enamored with the whole experience there. So that you yeah. think that added to the like, now I I really need to be doing my best or or. Is that, is that what, you, what you're referring to? Yeah, so <laughs> I really loved like going to first series. And, you know, when my, my kids were younger, I had to wait until I had a babysitter or a bill where my husband was home from work. Right. And I really loved the whole, I just loved the series. And I met so many wonderful people at Tim's. He just has his way of bringing all these people together, right? Yeah. And I really wanted to go more. And I wanted to 
learn more about the series in New Mysore. But I was um, a little apprehensive and nervous. Right. And then once I had my kids were like they had a preschool and kindergarten, I was able to go to Mysore. And, you know, the first few experiences, again, very eye-opening. Right. I had a cheat sheet, plus a, they had the old purple mat that we used to have a long time ago. And um, somebody had stenciled, one of the people had made a stencil around the mat of the first series. Oh, that's cool. Well, it was really cool, but I also had a cheat sheet. <laughs> and after about um, a year of my cheat sheet and my mat had worn off, you know, the stencil kind of work. <laughs> Tim comes up to me and goes, because I think we're going to take that away from you now. <laughs> and I was horrified, like, what? My teddy bear. <laughs> my, my, bink- my security blanket. My binky. I must have this. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we took it away. That was it. And you were, and yeah. obviously you were probably ready to go, and it was a perfect time. You, you were ready for it. I was ready. I was probably ready for it before, but I think he still, he, he just felt maybe that I needed it a little longer. Yeah. And also there were still poses where he would come up to me and go, what pose is this? You know, In like, terms of like what, if, what, 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 of a pose is what? this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, you're like, well, it's supposed to be my task in a D, but you know. <laughs> oh man. And this was all on East street. I'm thinking. Yeah, this is all East street. That's where I started. That's where I that's when I first saw you was was at that studio. Or I, or I remember you yeah. from from there. Oh man, what a classic place, right? I mean, I, I'll never forget walking in there and seeing the little box over to the right to to put your donation into, and yep. that just blew my mind. Like that was that experience alone was like, wow, this feels authentic and unique and. Oh man, and the this the 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 architect or the decorations on the wall with the painting and the I'll never forget that little picture of the person with the mountain doing the yoga pose in the bathroom oh, yeah. and um just little little things and and uh I had been coming from like hot yoga, so I was like, it's kinda cool in here. Like Southern California is like kind of chilly sometimes and so there's that one little heater kind of back there. The one little heater I always try to, I try I always try to get by that thing to kinda somehow warm up, but um what an amazing vibe in that space. That was so incredible. I loved it there. I even loved the leaky bathroom <laughs> on the side. Do you remember that? Like the, the water stain element, like where it would come yeah, through? Yeah, <laughs> and, and also sometimes you'd go in there and there'd be a little leak happening or, you know, or some with some, well, that's not flushing really well today or it's not, you know. <laughs> I loved all the quirks. I loved even, uh, you know, by where the heater was, it used to rain and, it was if it rained, it that's rained right. right there. That's right. So that, that part of the carpet would get a little mildew. That's right. And oh. it's weird when we moved to the forum how much I miss that. I, I know it's weird because the forum's so pretty and so nice and the floors were really nice. Yeah. But there was something about the carpet and the concrete. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, man, I hear you. That's really cool. How I'm curious. Well, you're still there. You're still in the area. You're still, you're in, you live in Carlsbad, am I right? Or Encinitas? I live in Solana Beach. Solana, Solana Beach. Beach. Right by Encinitas, yeah. Oh, nice. And can you explain how you're teaching these days? How have you evolved with the current just evolution of things? Uh, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> yeah, like, uh. <laughs> it's been, well, it's just been such a, it's the, the last, what, like over a year and a half now, um, has been such a journey. We closed um, the yoga center and we had moved to gather in Encinitas for just a few months mm-hmm. and we closed the yoga center there um, at the beginning of March. Mm-hmm. In 2020, obviously. And then when, because of COVID, we yeah. went right to Zoom. Mm-hmm. So for me, luckily, um, Bill, my husband, is pretty good with computers and all this stuff, because if I had to figure out Zoom on my own, there might have been a little bit of a problem. Right. So um, we all decided to do Zoom, and Carol and Tim were, help, were like, yep, we're going to do Zoom. So we all figured out how to get right onto Zoom. And actually, before we did Zoom, I tried um, the Instagram 
and also Facebook mm-hmm. before, you know, and I just didn't like not being able to see people mm. because in Ashtanga, I feel like, um, there's so many poses where you, you want to see what they're doing to make sure no one's going to get hurt. Right. So it was really hard for me not to see people. Yeah. So we, when we switched to zoom, um, it was nice because we could see people and my husband also, we commandeered my son's old bedroom <laughs> nice. and turned it into a yoga room. Awesome. And, uh, there's a TV in here so I can put everybody on a screen. Nice. And I, I will say at first it was hard not to, even today it's hard not to want to reach through and adjust somebody on the screen. I swear if I could figure it out in Zoom, I would do it. Um, (laughs) But it works. It really does work. And I think keeping everybody together with the Zoom was really amazing. So we don't have as many classes, but we still have Zoom classes for the Ashtanga Yoga Center. And then I also added, um, I didn't want to lose my practice and I did not want to lose my, um, basically all the people who I had practiced Mysore with Mm. at the center. I didn't want to lose these people. We've been together for years and I've known so many people for, you know, since these three events, right? Mm-hmm. So what I started was on every Tuesday and Friday, we would all practice together on Zoom. Just we, I'd be practicing too. We just nice. each do our practice, but yeah. we'd all have yeah. our squares on Zoom. Yeah. And then because a few of us are teachers, people would help people, and it just became the thing every Tuesday and Friday. And then as time went on, um, uh, we decided that we could start doing in the backyard. So I want to say it was September, maybe I decided to just do like a small donation in my backyard. And we're talking like four or five people would come to the backyard. Yeah. And we did that on Tuesday and Friday. And then slowly we started adding days, even in the winter. So we were just all wearing lots of clothes. And um, my husband put up, for the summer, he put up sails and he put in a fountain because the backyard just became kind of our little shelter. Yeah. But we also kept the Zoom Mysore people because some of them are, they don't live here. Right. So now we have uh, Zoom in the backyard and also live in the backyard. And now that's Monday, Tuesday, um, Thursday, and Friday, and Sunday. So it's like five days a week. So we went from just two days of just meeting together to now five days where we can all see each other. That's awesome. Yeah, it's been great. It's been really like so nice to keep it going. So we didn't lose everything. And then I think eventually um, we'll reopen somewhere, but we have to wait for the Delta variant to calm. I I agree. I agree. That's definitely something that, um, I feel like here there was the uh, excitement and hopefulness with the vaccine coming out that, you know, it was going to very quickly evolve it to everyone just being right back to where we were. And that that's not the case. I've noticed that it's uh, still kind of slow going and there's the apprehension and, you know, being indoors, but Um, I I definitely can attest to the fact of the importance of having a good, small, tight-knit group all getting together, whether it's on the Zoom and or in person, and just keeping the the feeling of the the yoga going. And I I don't know if you would agree, Holly, but like lately I, I feel like if there's a pressure cooker going on, that it's the pressure cooker is really getting full of pressure and (laughs) the release valve I find like is my yoga practice. Like when I practice every day, I feel like that's like a chance for me to put that pressure release valve (laughs) open just a little bit. (laughs) Take some of the, what is your, how how are, how is your practice and how is it, how is it changing with, um, you know, are you getting in on, on the mat every day? Are you doing like a couple days a week? Are you going f- doing full series I practice? I try to do at least five days just to keep up yeah. with my practice. I do, um, so I also find like aging definitely has changed a couple of things. But really only that 
Um, like I listen to my body more probably. Mm. Like if I'm not going to make it through a series or I'm not going to make it through something, I don't punish myself for that. Yeah. Nice. You know, nice. Are, is there like a particular pose and or part of your body that you're needing to avoid? Like I find like with Johnny Shoshasana C these days, I just don't, it, my knee is just not like that twist much. Is there something yeah, that you're, I, is there is there one that you've been like really laying off of lately? I have to lay off the twist. So I, my hip was bothering me, right? My right hip. And then I do have like a couple of this in there because finally they, they took an x-ray. But nothing, I mean, it's just like this because I'm getting older. Mm, so, yeah. but what they did see, which I thought was really interesting because my back doesn't hurt, um, is that, um, my sacrum will sometimes hurt. And the reason is, I guess, S1 is, is, is rubbing. So there's like, it's, it's called some kind of, I should have looked it up before I spoke to you. It, it starts with a BRA, so I call it the Bras disease, but that's not the name. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the name. It's good, it's so, unique. It's, it's something unique yeah. to you. Yeah. <laughs> L4 and L5 have probably always been close. And S1 has always, always been, not had that much something that I was probably born with. Yeah. And so as I get older, the, it still rub, you know, mm. so they, I have to be careful with the twist mm-hmm. and I actually enjoy the twist, but I, I backed off a little of that. Um, and like, I do still practice for series. I call it third series for seniors, but, um, <laughs> I want to, um, I want to take that version with you. <laughs> yeah, you should. It's really good. I do all the, I do, I don't get the poses so much as sometimes I'll have to modify something. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I'll be like, okay, well, you're not going to do this. I mean, you, you, it, there's got to be a modification. Right. Um, <laughs> but I think that's the, the key to modifying, but I have to do have to be careful of the twist, like for just the sacrum. But I will say what they did say about my back and the, um, and the discs and everything that they really feel the guy that looked at it. And there there were a couple people in the office that said, if I hadn't done yoga or if I didn't do yoga now, Mm. that that would probably be worse. That probably the back bend Mm. and the constant lengthening of my spine. Yeah. Probably really, really helped. Has helped yeah, therapeutically keep it open. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, that was good news. And I don't think that like, as you get older, like I, I want to say, I, I feel like a shanga can be for everyone for always. Yeah. And I just think that if you have to modify, you do. And if you're not doing the, the pose like you did when you were younger, it's still okay. Right. <laughs> it's an amazing, you need to use a prop. Yeah. 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 It's an amazing transition, isn't it? From that initial, like I have to get it this good, and be perfect to really relaxing with that. Yeah. And letting that go. It's it feels like so, a, it, yeah. It's kind of, um, freeing, you yeah. know, to, yeah. to relax it a little bit. It's, I think when you're, you're younger and you can push yourself a little more and probably, I don't know how you feel, but I feel like as I get older and I, I probably way calmer and more, Mm. I, I'm more grounded. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So I don't need to, to, to do as much. Right. Yeah. I hear you. I agree. I, when, you know, sometimes when you say like, I have to be careful of twists, my mind will go straight to thinking of like, like maybe in the second series, the Lord of the half fishes or the Artemis and Rasa, like as a twist. But then if I pull it way, way back, I'm curious, like twisting triangle and twisting side angle. Are you, Doing something yeah, different I'm, there I, as well. I am more more mindful. I try to keep my hips a little more. Yeah, I try not to like push myself too far in any of the the twists. Yeah, because I was always. It, I will say this about myself: the twists were always something that weren't as difficult for me. I mean, part of it is because I'm skinny. I'll be the first to tell you. People are like, "Why is this? Why can you do this?" And I go, "Well, it's not because my shoulders inwardly rotate because they don't like that, uh-huh. but I am thin." So there isn't as much to go around. And <laughs> believe me, I know it's a cheat. I'm right there. It's like 
people go, why are you doing that? Like, or, or, how, or, or how more, like, how is that happening? Right. And I go, well, part of it is I don't have that much to go around. Right. So it's going to be easier for me. And also, I, I'm really, my, I'm very twisty. That's one of, it's so it's, it's easier for me. So that's been an interesting thing to back off, mm. always because it was something that, that from the beginning I could actually do. Right. <laughs> Yeah, good point. The, the the one thing that you're like was my natural way to go. Now I have to learn how to not even do that. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. like really come on. <laughs> but it's, it's all good. I can still do it. I just don't. I don't definitely don't go as deep do you, as I used to. I hear you. That's cool. I agree with you. You know, I feel like we were really lucky because Tim was such a lover of pranayama and had he not i probably wouldn't have been exposed to it on such an incredible level is that something that you enjoy and still practice or is it something that was always dreadful and scary yeah yeah we still um so i don't usually go through the full sequence Uh um i do um sometimes we call it half pranayama i call it baby pranayama (laughs) Um, mostly because I get, because I've been teaching more, I don't have the time unless I get up earlier. Um, Mm. but, um, I do, I go through all the first half of pranayama out through all the alternate nostrils. Yeah. And then before, um, Vashrika, I, I close out. Nice. So it takes, I do, it's, it's about a half hour instead of the full pranayama used to take a little over 50 minutes. Mm-hmm. And so if I have, if, if I have a space where I can do it, then I'll do it, That's... you know, and I definitely, I will admit, you know, Tim, um, Tim's, uh, retention are definitely longer than mine. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I, I'll, I'll admit that too. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> longer. Like there would be times in there, and he'd tell he'd go, Well, it's okay to cheat, just don't do it, make it obvious. <laughs> right? Yes. So we do a workshop in Shasta and we do it um uh it's Tim's old old uh retreat. Yeah. So Tim used to go up to Shasta, which is my favorite thing of all time. Let me just tell everybody now. <laughs> I looked forward to Shasta every year and this year was my twenty first year in a row. Oh man, about, that's awesome! I know. How many years I in a row? I couldn't give it up. Tw- what? How many years in a row? Twenty-one. Nice. Year in a row. Yeah, I know. I couldn't give up Shasta. So when Tim decided he wasn't going to do Shasta anymore, just because it is a big, it is a big undertaking. Yeah. And so he had decided about four years ago that the undertaking was just too much. Yep. And he wasn't going to do Shasta anymore. And I thought, well, it may be too much for you now but you never know and I still think this that you never know when you want to come back so I'm not going to lose Shasta right yeah so I keep it going we just do a week um there um, and we've done it for the last four years even last year during COVID although it was just a very few people yeah and we were masked at all times but yeah. we did make it through um but in Shasta we do do a half pranayam and um, there are sometimes new people to pranayam, and so I would actually teach them how to teach so that it couldn't be detected. Mm. Can, because, you, can, can you teach me how to do that? <laughs> no, yes. yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I can't. That's awesome. Yeah. I, that's amazing. You know, that, that makes me think then, Holly, my mom and dad went on the Shasta trip with Tim one year, so that obviously you, you met them, or they were there one year with you then. Oh, did you know if they went first or second week? Um, they did the first series. So I think didn't Tim went to, wouldn't you guys always do like first series, the first week and second series, the second. second yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. So, so I can't remember what year this would have been. I'm thinking probably 2010 or 11. Oh, I had to meet them then because yep. I would have been there yeah. with my whole family. I was so jealous. Became, that my, <laughs> I know. It became our family vacation. My kids were the first kids to go to Shasta uh, along with, uh, um, Cooper, which is our friend's son, but th- they were the only kids there. This year, we had 11 kids. Nice. That's I know. That's it's awesome. Really amazing. 
It is cool when the kids get excited to do stuff with mom and dad. Oh, my kids would still go. Like they're <laughs> 29 and 31. And if Carson wasn't working, he would have gone. And why it's in Thailand. So it's, you know, it's a little far. But, I, <laughs> but I, yeah, it, there, it's still one of their favorite trips. I, I, you know, I never got a chance to go on the retreat with you guys, but I've only been to Mount Shasta one time and I, I've never, uh, I I remember, um, being blown away by the energy of the town and the mountains. And I had never come across the St. Germain group. Am I right? And I remember going into like a, either a little bookstore or it's called, I am come the bookstore. All right. That That must've been it. And, uh, Mm -hmm. just being like, what, what is, what's going on in this town? Like what, it just seemed very, um, surreal. And, the the beauty of the, the mountains was incredible. So I definitely want to join you if not next year, sometime soon. That sounds really cool. It is really cool. The, the beauty of the mountain and then the, the Lemurians that live in the mountains, apparently. The what? The, the Marians? They're called Lemurians. Lemurians. They're, uh-huh, they're an advanced race that came from Lemuria. Right. <laughs> and there was a whole book written. I can't remember the guy's name. You think I would remember, but I don't. But they they apparently live, there is a door that you could find on the mountain, and they're living, like, inside the mountain. They have tunnels, and they live there. Wow. And, and then every year we look for a Lemurian. Apparently they're very, they're taller than we are. Um, they would come out probably barefoot. It's a lot of people say they are in robes. And obviously somebody has said they have seen a Lemurian. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. but, but you haven't yet. Well, we were convinced. <laughs> have you seen I a Lemurian? <laughs> how many years ago was it? Well, this year um, there was a guy. Actually, this year there was something. So there was a guy. So we were coming off the mountain. On the last day, we actually go hike. Um, we go to um, what's called Southgate Meadows. On, on Mount Shasta. And we were coming down and we, we came out to the parking lot where our cars were and there was a guy climbing barefoot up the side of the mountain. It's not a, exactly Shasta. There's other, you know, offshoots of little mountains there, but this guy was climbing to the peak of this mountain barefoot. <laughs> and one of the kids was like, screaming to him and then the guy would scream back and he was far enough away where it would take time for the sound to hit us. Do you Mm. know what I mean? Yeah. And so he's up there and he made it to the top and then he came down later and I had already gone back, but he was talking to Dakota. He's the child that was screaming. I think he's about 14. Yeah. And some of the other people there and he came down and he's kind of barefoot and shirtless and kind of tall and, really out there and telling like the spiritual experiences he's having on the mountain. So he could have been a Lemurian. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's what we're thinking. That's the story, That's <laughs> That's... The story we're telling. <laughs> yeah. Because Dakota was pretty excited because he met a Lemurian. Sometimes I read a, a Lemurian tale um, and we have story time at night. And, and one of them was the, the tale of the Lemurian. That's awesome. Where do you think this story originated from? You know, there's a guy who, who they, they come from um, Pangea. So like when we had, you know, um, a long time ago, right? So they were supposedly here, living here. Mm. Like, and they, they put them with like Atlantis. Gotcha. And the Lemurians and they, they didn't, there was some some disagreement there, something happened. And then they went and we found a place to be and Shasta was where it was. And then they built their tunnels and everything in the mountains. That's awesome. So like that they've been here for quite some time. That's cool. So, I've never heard that story before. Yeah, it's a really um it's a really interesting story. I like to read it. You think I would memorize it, but I just I've read it, and and at this point, I've read it quite a few times. 
time. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be honest. A lot. I'm definitely going to um, check that out. Tim would just bring it up, and then I kind of started um, reading about it. And he would always have story time yes. at night, and so we still do that. But I've been reading just different different stories, of like about Hanuman, or I just tell stories about the different deities because, you know, each day has a different deity. And it's fun because the kids will come in for story time and for kirtan. Yes. I know that makes me think, uh, that reminds me like story time was maybe my most favorite part of doing organized trainings with Tim where he would pull out some book that looked like it had at least 1500 pages in it. And uh-huh. <laughs> like one of those books that you're like, you know, did, did, have you read that Tim? He's like, yeah, this is my third time going through it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is my third time reading yeah. it. Like, oh my God, really? Like, Cause- how- yeah, I know. He has such an incredible depth of reading ability and, and uh, uh, grasp of the mythology in yoga. Do you have, um, I guess when I was reading your, your uh, about my journey on your website today and you made reference to Hanuman and Lakshmana and, and uh, Tim and Rich and not to get emotional or anything like that, but, um, you know, can you explain that correlation so that people that don't know about yeah. the, the the bond between Hanuman and and uh, or stories out of the Ramayana where you would make that distinction. So in in the Ramayana, it's really about Rama and Lakshma. So they're they're brothers, right? Rama and Lakshma, and um, Rama uh, was to be like the king of Ayodhya, but then. He got banished. That's the, I, I can't go into that. It would, you know, but yeah. he gets banished because yeah. he does, and <laughs> for fourteen <laughs> years um, because of a uh, 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 misunderstanding, I'll call it. Okay. But so he's he's in the forest, and Lakshman, his brother, he was supposed to go alone, but his brother and his wife Sita, so Rama and Sita, and Lakshman go with him for the 14 years and Lakshman loves his brother. Like, I mean, he will do anything for his brother and they're very close. And then, so when Sita gets taken by Ravana, the demon King, um, Lakshman and Rama go to find her. And then they meet Hanuman and Hanuman becomes devoted to Rama. Mm. Right, so there is a big devotion to Rama, but the reason we named um, Rich Lakshman mm. was kind of because of Rama and Lakshman. But there, there, it's just that kind of devotion. Yeah, like Rich was Rich was always there for Tim, and they had like a brotherly relationship. Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. they were. It, it was like. It, they were just so close and so in tune with each other. And Rich would just, he was going to teach in um, the same way as Tim. You know, it was it was really important to him that, wow, this is going to make me cry, that I, the yoga center I, I, I know. was, was I thought... run like the same way for Tim, right? Because it, it was really important. And um, actually I have a picture of Tim and uh, of Rich in my room and Tim here in my yoga room both. <laughs> and um, it was really, really important to him. And then Rich ended up, um, he got uh, liver cancer and Rich passed away. Um, mm. Mm, God, that was really hard. I was very close to Rich. And so actually I have a, a tattoo. I think it's on my website and you'll see it. It's like the, the Ganesh picture on the website is actually a tattoo on my leg that I have because that's that's my reminder of Rich. He came up with this little Ganesh design and put it on um, and put it on the rug and then I never really used a rug. I mean on a big sweater so I got the tattoo on my leg so that I would always nice. have Rich with me. Aww. And it, it's always stayed with me with Rich how important it is like to keep the studio, like the Shanghai Yoga Center, how Tim would want it to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so Tim always had 
I mean, he could be strict, but he did let us use props if we need him, if we were injured, you know, and yeah. he let us age and still do the practice. Yeah. And he also had a sense of humor. So even though he was strict, there was this sense of humor that was always there, you know? And so I, I, because he's not around currently, I try to keep the sense of humor there because I think that's what made me want to go all the time. You know, like it is a serious thing and I breathe and it, you know, I got to say yoga for through COVID or through this time definitely has helped. I mean, I don't know what I'd do without my practice. It's just amazing. I agree. But it's the sense of humor and the joy of the practice that Tim had and that I think Rich wanted to continue, and I hope that I'm doing the same thing. Uh But the whole Rich and Tim thing was more that they were like brothers. They were just, they were in sync. It was incredible to to see, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really (laughs) a beautiful beautiful relationship like you know when we'd have the teacher training and rich would always play the drum and he he and tim with the with the harmonium and the drum were just perfectly together you know it was like rich could feel what tim needed and it just it was a great thing truly it was really really good and then after rich passed i had to try to play the drum a few times <laughs> oh my god what a disaster i mean i can keep the beat but i can't do like the, the rich flourish it just wasn't gonna happen and now because i've been trying to learn the harmonium oh my god that's a whole other fall of what well, I, I remember uh you know, Tim, Tim, Tim had said, I was like, is that hard to play? And he's like, well, any idiot can play a harmonium. And I thought, oh, well, it's not as easy as that, though. <laughs> no, it isn't. It, you know, if there were no, if I didn't have to, my left hand didn't have to do the bellows, we'd be all fine. But the bellows is what's <laughs> yeah. yeah, he used to say, I don't know if you ever heard this. So people would ask, uh, Tim did Tim Prov? And, you know, it was improv by Tim, so we started calling it Tim Prov. <laughs> and people would ask for Ashtavakrasana, but not like from headstand Ashtavakrasana, but just going into Ashtavakrasana because they'd say, oh, I see this picture of someone doing that right. that pose. Can right. we try it? And yeah. Tim goes, even my grandmother could do this pose. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I don't know. I would say that <laughs> it's definitely, you know, doable if you don't do it from headstand for sure. But right. I don't, a grandmother. <laughs> so we fondly now call that the grandmother's pose. Oh, classic. That's grandma it's our pose. Name. Like, okay. Are we going to do the grandma pose today? <laughs> oh man. I think, I mean, so I like, think that's the thing about the Ashtanga yoga center. That's just so unique that I, I haven't come across before that or after that really was that just incredible, like rich history, you know, like, and even just where you have different names for everything, but like, you know, because you've been around it for so long, it just, it kind of makes you smile and makes you feel good because <laughs> you would kind of know what, like what you're, now that you're calling it that, I'm, I'm going to have to borrow that as well. And yeah, Ashtavakrasana is officially grandma's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but I hear like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Part of that, I think, is you what know. was pretty amazing and special, or is amazing and special. Yeah, he just, I loved his sense of humor. I just, I really, really miss it. And you know what else I miss? So, and I actually try to do that here. Um, I'll be honest. You would look for, to see where Tim was. Like, for me, I'm not a big back bender, so, like, I would look in the room to see where Tim was when I had to do Kapitasana. <laughs> I'm just going to be really honest here. So I make sure <laughs> that Tim was on the other side. I would procrastinate, actually, <laughs> until Tim had motivated to, like, the other side of the room, right? Right. And then I would quickly, like, <laughs> okay, you got to do Kapitasana really fast. So let's do these five breaths and get it out. They'll never notice. And then you come up and he'd be right there looking <laughs> yeah. at you and you'd be like, Oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. And then he'd go once again with feeling. <laughs> and you'd be thinking, 
And I just, I could have just done it once and just like let him be here. But no, I had to try to sneak it. I had to try to sneak out of it. But obviously, you know that by the time you got to Ustrasana, he's watching you going, I know she's going to procrastinate and I'm going to pretend to walk over to this side of the room for a little bit. <laughs> That's exactly true. There was a so co you know, you know, it. Yeah. You kept his eye on you and you're like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then and then you're breathing instead of like the usual five breaths. Now you're breathing at warp speed. <laughs> yeah. You're just going to get this done as fast as you can get it done and be out <laughs> and on to the next post. Oh man! <laughs> as fast as you can do it. So fun. Yeah, it I is. Miss that game so I know. I mean, it, it is fun. I feel like I feel like that's where I started to really connect with the yoga practice in a way that it felt more than just like a, you know, something I'm trying to do for other people or to try to maybe get that cool photo or, you know, um, get some sort of ego blast and. Where I just start having fun, even though I I do remember Holly that uh, it, for when I when I went out there to do the second series training, kind of had this feeling before I was going out there that I I really got to get ready. You know, I got to get ready. This is going to be intense. I got to prepare. I got to train. <laughs> so in my process for getting ready, like to the day before I went to go out there, I I dislocated a rib on my back and and um, was in a lot of pain. And I remember thinking. So then when I got to we got to California, or I got to California. I thought, well, I'm in so much pain, so I should go take the lead second series class. And you were teaching it. And, you know, like realistically, I should have just been like laying low or doing something other than like cranking out a solid second series class. And I'm going to agree with that, you know, and still feeling like I still have to perform and I still need to. It's hard to let that go. I mean, at least personally, I've always, you know, I feel like I'm getting better at that. But I've I've had, definitely had that challenge with um feeling pressure to really perform somehow and so uh such a humbling experience like because then I really got laid out and I was down to doing child's pose and you know sun salutation at one point I remember Tim like attempted to help assist my back or you know do a little like here let me pull on you and maybe it'll go back into place and I just remember just feeling so miserable and uh, thinking, um, you know, also whenever Tim would pull out the harmonium, I always had this feeling of like remembering when I was in church and I, I, I just didn't like singing hymns in church. It was something I never really enjoyed and never connected with. And I, and I kind of like not want to roll my eyes, but be a little like, oh boy, you know, now we're going to sing songs. You know, I just wasn't really feeling it. But during that training, because my rib, I was in so much so much pain basically and oh, Tim would start playing the Hanuman Chalisa and I I just start crying and bawling like quietly like I don't think anyone else knew but and I really connected with that's when I really just went oh now I get it like now I, I think now I understand why we're doing this and I I just um still took a little while for my rib to go back in and you know it healed and everything was good but it was just an incredible emotional experience for me that I just uh, I find it interesting that you say that because I I feel that the Hanuman Chalisa so you know we would always sing it um uh early Tuesday mornings mm-hmm. we would we would do the the Chalisa and I always if I had something going on whether it would be like a physical thing or and just an emotional thing yeah. and I wouldn't be I don't know how, how to put it maybe not dealing with it or not right. um, working through it mm-hmm. the Hanuman Chalisa would bring that out mm-hmm. you know what I mean it would just be like all of a sudden I'd be falling and I'd be <laughs> yeah. just like coming to some sort of realization that I'd yeah. be thinking, wow, yeah. this is what the yoga is all about. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. This is what it is. That's something I'm really thankful for. Like that rit- that depth that came with all the other elements that were brought into the room there beyond yeah. just doing the, the postures. I, th- I just feel really appreciative for that. Yeah, I am too. And I also really appreciate the, the teaching like that, the, um, 
the the yoga would come through you you know your your spiritual practice or your yoga is going to come through yourself through your work right mm. he wouldn't say he would he would bring out books and set them all down like remember I did he'd bring out like all the yogas and he'd say you guys can borrow these books or do whatever or he would suggest reading but he would never say you need to read this like yeah. in order to be yeah. spiritually you have to read this and you have yeah. to do this yeah he would just say, well, if you want to read something, you could do this. Or yeah. if you're feeling this and it just, I just think it's such a great thing that he did because I think any, any decision about my yoga practice or my spiritual practice, I feel like came, I got to make that choice. Mm. You know, he yeah. led, he, he gave you direction, but he didn't say this is what you must do. Right. He did say, like, for everybody, it's going to be different. And I I really appreciated that. I agree. You know, I, I think it's a really important thing. And I, I'm hoping I'm doing that here. Like, I don't say, oh, if you don't read the Yoga Sutras, you're going to, you know. Yeah. Yep. Um, because I've gone places where it's really, it's been like that. I've mm. visited places and I went, wow, I really, really appreciate him more and more. That's a good you point. You know, his That's teaching. A- that's a really good point. Have yeah, you, he really. Ha, have you have you done the Mahabharata yet? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did yeah. It. Actually, you know, my son who lives in Thailand, um, I had sent him. I have a cousin who lives in India. She lives in um, Chennai, uh-huh. and he, when he was younger, when he was twenty, um, he was having you know just a hard time figuring life out. So I sent him to India, and. Um, he was there for six months with my cousin, but he did his own journey. He did music. He did his own thing. And then the last, he was going to leave India. And um, so I went to go visit my cousin and Wyatt for a couple weeks. And during that time, I started the Mahabharata mm-hmm. and read the whole, actually the whole first book and part of the second book where it starts the Gita in there. All of that was read in India because I had time, you know, nice. like, yeah. It was really beautiful. I'd wake up, I could do my practice because Wyatt was a late sleeper and I could read the book. <laughs> it was so relaxing. That's awesome. You know, and it was a great place to read it because I was there. And then I finished it when I came home. But I haven't read it in, in years. I just listened to the Gita again. Um, uh, Eshwaran's version of the Gita on mm. uh, audiobook. And I love the guy that reads the the audiobook. I, I wish I could tell you his name. I, know, he does the, I, th- I think I have that on audiobook as well. That's that was you? that was the only way. Sure. I don't want to say it was the only way I was going to get through the Mahabharata, but that was the first way I got through the Mahabharata was on the audio. Oh, I've never to, listened to it. There is one is available. The same guy. I don't oh, know I, if it's the same narrator as the. Are you talking about the Eknath Eswaran version yeah. or? or of the of the Gita, I'm not sure, but um, it was really helpful because it's obviously a long story, and to have it, you know, be played and be able to listen made it a little easier for me to go all the way through. But it was so awesome to then get the context of the Bhagavad Gita within the, the within bigger the, picture the, of yeah, yeah. And I read the Mahabharata before I read the Gita, so for me it was like wow. So this is it, <laughs> like separately. Yeah. And then um, I love that Ramesh. Bennett version uh-huh. of the Mahabharata because he made it more like, you know, a story, very, yeah. very long. And readable. So many pages. Yeah. But yeah, I really, I, I did love that and I love the Ramayana. I actually love the Indian myth more than probably anything. I really do. I love reading I all the stories. I I'm agree. Big on if you... The stories I would love when Tim would tell us stories I would be like so wrapped like oh it's story time I'm so in so, <laughs> no. or I'd make him open in improv that's what I would ask for like he'd yeah. make us do a pose like a Rishi pose and I'd go oh but we can we have a story with it <laughs> yeah. like to make it more doable there's a Vairavasana pose in third series that may not be my favorite pose it may not be my least favorite but certainly it's <laughs> up there with my favorite pose but the story that, that goes with it makes me laugh, so I'm like, all right. Maybe I can do I it. 
just so I can do it. Just so people know, isn't that Bhadravasana is like the terrible Shiva pose? Isn't it like the like the, the yeah, Shiva, he the scary Shiva? Yeah, because he head. Yeah, and you have your leg behind your. You have your leg behind your head while you're doing a one arm side balance. So yes. it's so it's not easy to say the least. No. So what's the no. what's the story that goes with that that would make it more pleasant? So um, Shiva, you know, he's always on Mount Kailash and he's always meditating. Basically, that's his thing, uh-huh. and he doesn't like to be disturbed. You know, if he's done meditating and he goes somewhere, it's fine. But he really doesn't like to be disturbed. So. Brahma uh, needs his seed for something. And so he goes over there and he's like, you know, I got to bother you because I need your seed. And first of all, he is <laughs> disturbed because he's been bothered. And second, he's not going to give his seed. He's like, no, I don't. Think so. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not giving you any of my I'm not, seed. I'm not That's doing not going to happen. Right. I'm not doing it. So Brahma persists with this, like, no, you got to give it to me. You, you must do it. And, he was like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And he gets really angry because, you know, sometimes Shiva loses his temper a little bit. And he gets really angry. And so Brahma and Shiva are fighting. And I like to picture this up in the heavens that they're just flying around fighting each other with swords, right? Right. So Shiva accidentally cuts off one of Brahma's heads. And he feels horrible about this situation. <laughs> so... He decides he has to do penance, and he comes down to earth to do penance. And as he's coming down, he's holding Shiva's head, and it turns into a skull because, you know, as he's coming down, the, the, the skin comes, he just turns into a skull. Right. So now he's going to use this skull as a begging bowl. So he's just, he's just like a mendicant. He's a beggar in the streets. He's got his bowl. He's not really eating just what people give him or what they put in his bowl. But as he's walking down the streets, there's still women because he is Shiva, after all. The Mm -hmm. women just feel his power, right? Right. So these women are just following him, and he gets really like, oh, I just can't do this anymore. I'm doing penance. So he reaches um, and pulls his penis off and throws it in the ground. Mm. And that's supposedly like the first Shiva lingam. And that's the Bhairava story. Uh-huh. So I always picture like this happening. <laughs> and I go, okay, well, that's amusing. I'm just going to do this pose now. So, like a, And I think to myself, this is the first Shiva Lingam pose. Classic. Yeah. yeah. Almost and like a, dis- a distraction, but also a way of making what you're doing seem less terrible. Yeah. If you relate it to the idea of some of the ideas that you mentioned. <laughs> Yeah, you're just like, okay, well, it's okay. He he did a terrible thing. He did penance for it in a big way. Like, I, right, you know, right. may have gone a little far there, but, you know. <laughs> oh, man. For a while, I would call it, I called it the penis pose the pe- just to hear myself. <laughs> And then I went back to Bible about it. But yeah, you, you decided yeah. maybe that's not going to be, like, grandma's pose, that's good, but to everywhere but I go. penis pose, not so much. <laughs> No, I have different names for different poses, but that one didn't stay. The the grandma's pose that we, I we, call Varanchasana Vicious Asana. You know, vicious I, Asana. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to write a book and like, you know, re rename everything. Like give it a <laughs> Oh, I could. <laughs> There's way more where that came from. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's there awesome. are. That's awesome. But it gets me through sometimes, you know, if I'm having a hard time or if, you know, I feel like it, it'll bring me back into focus of what I'm doing. Or sometimes I have to bring myself back to my breath. There are certain poses I, I have a really hard time with breathing. And so if I can make myself laugh, I'll be like, okay, now you're laughing. So now let's breathe. You know, now it's, now it's okay to breathe. You don't need to hold your breath for this entire pose. Right. I don't know if you ever find yourself holding your breath, but there are times where I'm like, I don't, was I even breathing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> How long it's that a is breath it? practice. <laughs> Not hold your breath. You know, as you're, yeah. as you're talking, Holly, I feel like maybe you're, you're um, channeling Encinitas energy and 
and I, I miss Encinitas. Like I, or I know you're in Solana, but that whole like Swami's going surfing yeah. at Swami's and that whole Carlsbad stretch. And it's so beautiful and magical. Like there's just days where it just feels so perfect there. Like the sky, the temperature, the ocean, it just has such an incredible feeling there. Do you, um, I, being that you've been living there for so long, do you still feel that you have that appreciation? Are you in, I know like where I live, I kind of take things for granted and I'm like, you know, it's just another beautiful day, but are you, do you still feel that magic? <laughs> there? Oh yeah, no, totally. I, I love it here. Yeah. It's funny because a lot of times we talk about you know, what if we move to like central California or if we move, you know, yeah. wherever we would be thinking, I'm like, Oh, I don't know. It's hard to want to leave here. It's got, yeah. it really does have a great energy here and, um, so many wonderful people. It's, and it is just like when you drive the coast here, it's, it's really, really beautiful. Yeah. It's a really beautiful place. So- um, yeah, I honestly can't imagine really leaving here. I, hear I guess ya. you never know, but I, hear ya. Yep. I do. Yep. I do love it here. That's all. Yeah, and it is where it is where I started. You know, it's like it's, it's it, this is like my journey is so different than I imagined it would be. Mm. I mean, I never. I don't think I ever thought I'd be teaching yoga. If you had seen my yoga practice at the beginning, and I. I never thought I'd be teaching yoga or trying to keep it going through a pandemic or, or I didn't even know I could love it so much or it's such a big part of my life and who I am. And I think it, it's really helped me in so many ways. Maybe even like I would even go so far. It probably helped me be a better mom because I'm definitely more patient. Um, I believe, yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely, right? If we're encouraged yeah. to like listen to what's going on and pay attention, then our kids are talking and giving signals all the time. So if we start listening to that, that definitely is going to make us better at it. I think so. I think it just really helps with so many things. It's why I like when people go, oh, well, I, I'm not going to do um, – my practice anymore because I'm getting older and I, I'll even point to like, you know, to like David Williams still does his practice. He's older than me. David Flint and I are the same age, but we, it, you, it may not look the same and you may have to leave something out or modify it or use a prop, but you know, you can still do, um, your practice. Definitely. And it's just, I don't know. I think it can be done for a long time. I, I think, plan on it. <laughs> I plan on it too. I plan on at least trying. I think there, I mean, uh, when I do a sun salutation with cow and cat in child's pose, like if I'm, if I get that little area that keeps getting re-triggered and I I'm starting to listen now and not push it and just kind of cow cat child's pose and come back up to standing, hopefully I, I don't see how I mean, uh, I hope, you know, 90s, 100. Me too. It's still possible, I'm, right? I'm right there with you, yeah. I remember seeing those pictures of Krishnamaracharya doing headstanding, little black and white photos, and I don't know what age they said he was at, but you're like, wow. Yeah. I, I want to be that old. Like, I want to be mean, that old. Like, <laughs> Dharma Mitra still does. Right? Yeah. It, do, it does. I think that's one of the cool things about yoga. Maybe in most other aspects of our society and life, it's kind of like, you know, age, ooh, you know, cross your fingers in front of you and hold it off, ward it off. But I don't know when you see the elder yogis going for it or just the, even a picture of them just sitting peacefully with a shawl wrapped around them. There's something about that that feels like I want to do that. Like I want to get old. I don't want to bring up anything sad, but I, you know, yesterday have, um, three, uh, friends, uh, their memorial services were all on the same day yesterday. You know, mm-hmm. I had, yeah, all, all my age. One was a local. Your pre- age? Yeah. I, these are my buddies from school days growing up. And, um, I, where I, where I am here in Juno beach is where I was born and raised. So I have, you know, friends here from, from back from elementary school days. And one of them, um, 
from COVID. One of them, uh, unfortunately, was suicide, and the other was depression and, and overdose. And and um, it just kind of hit me last night of, you know, I have friends that are in their 80s, uh, clients that are all elderly that say, you know, you hit a certain age where your friends, people start passing and you start feeling like you're the last one standing, so to speak. And, and I always thought that would be coming later on in life and not where I am now because I still feel young. You know, I still feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm still, I got a long way to go yet. Right. And, uh, yeah. but, it, but ultimately after I shed a few tears, I, I had like a sense of, appreciate I have a, a feeling of appreciation like I, I um, feel thankful that I still want to really go for it and make the most out of every moment you know and just really right. appreciate what, what we have right now and yeah uh, so anyway sorry to take us down that track no but, but wow I can't believe that that's got to be so hard it, it was to have people when they're so young pass I, away I know I know. I think so. Yeah. Ultimately, I love that element in the yoga and or I feel like it's also a big part well, of all these traditions. But I um, was even going to mention like Tibetan Buddhism where there's that, you know, just every day we have is like, you know, such a blessing and we got to make the most of it. Like we don't know what we're going to get later on. <laughs> and uh, so I mean, we better make 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 good of it. Do, um, yeah, you got to live in the moment and enjoy every moment that you have. I agree. Even on that note, you did say, Holly, kind of like you never would imagine you'd be here now and doing what you're doing. Do you spend much time, like even nowadays, even trying to visualize where your future is headed? Do you not go there much? Do you do, you do that type you of thing? I mean, I guess the, the, the farthest I can play go in the future is like thinking about when we would reopen a studio. <laughs> yeah. That's really what you're you like. You're, th that's where you feel you're like holding for that, a big moment like that, or that would be a, a I monumental. I really am because yeah. I think it would be so nice to have us all together in, in a room again. Not that it isn't beautiful. Yeah. Outdoor, I love our outdoor area. It's yep. still like my husband really, you know, we really work to make it a really like nice area. But I mean, I think it'd be nice to be inside and I think more people would be willing to come. It's just finding the right time. And so I guess that's, that's the future I think about. Awesome. On that note, then, um, when that happens, I'm going to make a pact to come and be there on that reopening day. Really? Yeah. I, 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 I want to get out there that. so bad. <laughs> I want to come back and hang out in some Southern California energy so bad. So, uh, so yes, Holly, that's, I'm, I'm, com I'm going to come visit you when. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep you. So please, keep please let posted. me know. Yeah. <laughs> give, me, I will. give me a couple of weeks heads up if that's coming. Oh, I will. <laughs> yeah. We, um, we talk about it all the time and then something happens, you know, with COVID that changes the thought right, process. Right. And so it's like, it's okay. Yep. Just have to be patient. Be patient. Take like one day at a time. That's right. You know, yeah. But I mean, I definitely, I hope to always be teaching. I really, I love it. I, hear I love it so much. Oh man, Holly, I'm so thankful for you taking time out of your day to, to speak with me and and uh, and share all these stories. And I'm just really thankful to have this chance to, to chat with you. And, uh, it just, uh, reminds me of what, what, I'm, what I'm doing and what, what I'm, what I'm trying to strive toward. So, um, thank you. Well, I, well, you're welcome. And I really enjoyed chatting and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. It felt really good to talk about everything. Yeah, me Even, too. Um, Tim and Rich, who I miss so much. I know. Yeah. I know me too. <laughs> so that let's try to end on a giggle instead of a tear <laughs> yeah definitely ending on a giggle <laughs> awesome holly you're the best i look forward to catching up yeah me too All thank right. you take care please check out holly on her website hollygastill.com spelled H-O-L-L-Y-G-A-S-T-I-L dot com. 
I'll put a link in the notes below. Native Yoga Toddcast is produced by myself. The theme music is dreamed up by Bryce Allen. If you like this show, let me know. If there's room for improvement, I want to hear that too. We are curious to know what you think and what you want more of, what I can improve. And if you have ideas for future guests or topics, please send us your thoughts to info at Native Yoga Center. You can find us at nativeyogacenter.com. And hey, if you did like this episode, share it with your friends, rate it and review, and join us next time.